Now, by and large, the democracy has been working fine, in my view. Um, we have had several elections, several changes of government, 60 years it has lasted. And mind you, that's, that's, that's quite a remarkable achievement because when we began, um, many Western sages, including uh, the highly admired Winston Churchill, who in the view of many Indians was an outright racist, um, I know that that, is, that doesn't go down well in, uh, audiences, uh, among audiences in, in America. I've had problems when I've said that before. But to Indians, he's seen a little differently from the way he's viewed here. But he was totally against the idea of Indian independence, and it was, in fact, FDR who eventually persuaded him to change his mind. So these, uh, what I call Western sages, gave India a little chance of surviving as a nation. India has defied such dire predictions by merely existing. It has, however, done so by maintaining a democratic framework of government. It has survived not despite democracy, as some suggest, but because of it. And I can venture to suggest that no previous attempt at creating a republican democracy began quite as boldly as India's. Undoubtedly, the founding fathers of the United States um, launched a pioneering venture, and their effort, enshrined in a remarkable constitution, stands testimony to their brilliance. They did not, however, go quite as far, understandably, because given the stage of political and, um, uh, let's say, political thinking uh, in those days, um, that it hadn't evolved to that stage yet, so that they didn't offer all their adult citizens the right to vote. And it wasn't actually until the mid-60s that every citizen in this country, with the passage of specific acts, could in fact vote freely. India took a gamble there, and India, all Indians above the age of 21, regardless of gender, caste, or class, were free to exercise the right to vote in the first general election in 1952. Now, by extending the vote to everyone, the framers of the Constitution were being, in my view, merely pragmatic. A tradition of pluralism had long existed in Indian culture. India's political elite, as well as its military, had developed a liberal commitment to democracy, which they had imbibed from the West partly through the British, but in opposition to the British, in the sense that every advancement in democratic behavior and democratic uh, um, changes in, 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 the, in the ruling structure of India during the British Raj happened with the British trying to impose a certain kind of law and then the Indian nationalists opposing it by borrowing ideas that eventually actually came a lot from the Scottish Enlightenment, from people like the Mills and uh, Bentham and Jones. So the point is that India being a democracy is, is not a surprise. It, the point is that there's no other way that India can survive. My argument is that if anybody tries to rule India as a dictatorship, the country is going to explode. Because the whole idea is to keep this nation of so many sub-nations. There are 18 official languages, including English. And many people ask me, oh, all Indians speak English, don't they? No, it's about 7 or 8%. But 8% is 80 million people. That makes India the second largest English-speaking country in the world. It's the, it's the numbers are staggering. And even Nepali has become an official language in India now. There's, every religion is there. There's so many ethnic groups, to say nothing of caste. But all this can be held together in a democratic, liberal framework. 